throw things, project things today. Uh, so chapter 10 stuff with projectile motion. And yeah, I, I have no intro. That was it. But I had a question over here. And it usually when I ask people, I just wanted to share it with the whole class. Because <laughs> I bet money others of you had a similar question. It was the bolt. It's, it's still, it's not due yet, but if you've looked at this week's homework, which will be on chapter 7 and chapter 10 due Sunday, um, the bowling ball question. Uh, what did it say? How much work did gravity do on the, on the bowling ball? Is that how it was worded? Oh, so it tells you no work is done, but doesn't tell you why. All right. Well, what's work? A little review. I would hope you'd have two answers for this. The equation that guides our thinking and or a conceptual idea of what work accomplishes. Yeah. That's correct. It's a force applied over a certain distance. And conceptually, that will transform its energy from one form to another. Don't th again, don't think of objects as possessing work. They can possess energy. Work can transfer it and trans or transform it. So in this case, yeah, it's force times distance. So we're talking about gravity. Gravity's down. It's vertical. Does the ball move in the vertical direction in a bowling lane? No. So the vertical distance is zero. There's no work done. So gravity does no work on the bowling ball because it's pulling down on it, but it, it doesn't move down. That's the short answer to it. What might be confusing you is, well, the ball is still moving. Horizontally, yes. And what's keeping the ball moving horizontally? Momentum, we can say now, or also momentum is blank in action, in motion, inertia. It doesn't need a force to keep moving. But we say it has inertia, or, and now momentum. So, but eventually, we know the ball would slow down because of friction. Yeah, friction. And that acts in which direction? Opposite of, the, of its motion. Very good. And it's horizontal. So that is a horizontal force, and the ball is moving horizontally. They're in the same direction. So we could say friction is doing work on the ball, but gravity is not. And I'm, I'm particularly glad you asked this question. You know, I just, which one's Michelle? OK. It's an M word, though, right? Megan, Melanie. I missed the head nod. Melanie is the second one, OK. Sorry, I still get you guys. I'm in my head, I get you mixed up. So thank you, Michelle. Because today, that's what we're doing, is, is separating those two directions, vertical and horizontal, more. So I'm going to start out with this monkey shoot. It's a classic problem here. Let's see, let's turn this on. That, well, it's a classic physics problem. We're going to take this bullet, it's our ammo, and load the gun. It's an old propane tank that we're going to put compressed air into. That will provide the impulse force over a certain amount of time. It'll apply a force while it's in the tube. So that's an impulse. Or a force over a distance. It'll put work, exert work on it. It'll gain energy, momentum, kinetic energy. It'll fly over. And we're going to shoot monkey here. He's in a tree. The idea is here, well, and, but mo monkeys are pretty smart. So the idea is the hunter's aimed at the monkey. And if you want, it's a tranquilizer gun. And as soon as the, the hunter fires, pew, so like as soon as the bullet comes out of the, of the gun, the monkey's fast. He lets go. Because the hunter is aimed right at the monkey in the tree. He lets go and hopes that the bullet will miss him. 
So I can think of three options. The bullet will miss him, either above the monkey, below the monkey, or it'll hit him. What do you guys think? Basically, we're, we're shooting something now, and it's moving vertically and horizontally at the same time. Go ahead, discuss it with your neighbor. You already think you know? All right, who thinks it will hit the monkey? Who thinks it will miss above the monkey? A few takers. And who thinks it will miss below the monkey? One boat there. All right, the majority of you are thinking it will hit the monkey, so I want to hear an explanation, what, what, a reasoning. What are, you, what are you thinking? Yeah, the way this, well, if it all functions properly, there's a little lever right here. So as soon as the bullet comes out, it flips the switch, which is providing current to this electromagnet. So as soon as the bullet comes out, this will release. So he, the monkey should fall, and the bullet will, will sh come on over and see what happens. Yeah. Why, though? In the first second, they should both fall the same distance. Why? What did somebody say? Gravity's acting the same on both of them. And we learned it's, is the force the same on both? Vertically. Thank you. Bless you. They have different weights. Hope you got that one now. It's, they don't, things don't fall at the same rate because they have the same force. It's because they have the same rate of change, acceleration of gravity. So yes, they accelerate down the same together. Anybody else want to add to that? Yeah. The speed of the horizontal. How would that affect things? So if it's shot faster, It'll stay straighter. It'll stay in that motion unless another force acts upon it. And what is that other force that will be acting upon it? Gravity. So gravity will still act on it with the same force and the same acceleration vertically as if it was going slower. We can try it. I can shoot it fast and slow. Let's do it. Exactly. It's like, be quiet, Adam. Get on with it. All right. I need to put some air in the tank to make sure it's air, not the flammable gas. I always worry about that. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll shoot it faster this time. No, that's the, uh, my bad, the lever went the wrong direction. Put that on a little tighter. All right, that's pressurized quite well. Got my firing button here. All right, one, two, three. <laughs> Boom! Yeah, I knocked his head off. Do you see that? The bullet can tips in the air, but it's yeah, it still ran right into him. Do you guys were you able to see that? Okay. Yeah, it knocked his mask off. You, you see that? I saw this. You know. <laughs> So it did hit him. And you're right. Your explanation is correct. So it was over here. All things accelerate down at the same rate. So vertically, the same thing happens to both of these. The bullet is being pulled down 
at the same rate the monkey is. It just so happens that this also has a horizontal speed. So it's moving this way at the same time it goes down. But the amount it moves down is just due to gravity. So if we do it again, and I don't air it up as much so that it shoots out slower, what do you expect to happen? Will it still hit the monkey? Uh-oh, you guys don't sound too confident. It's, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but shoot it slower. All right, one option, it still hits it, but they fall further before they collide. Any other votes? Yeah, I'm going to at least make it enough so it clears the table. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> that should clear the table if I hurry up. <laughs> it leaks a little. All right, one, two, three. <laughs> Boom. What happened? I couldn't tell over there. Did it go right above it? Is that what it did? Well, it was supposed to hit it. I wonder what happened. Let's see. Let's try. We'll do it again. You could see they both fell further, didn't you? So they were st either way, they were still pretty darn close. And even though that one skimmed his top of his head, didn't quite make it. Before they hit like here, that one, if it was closer to down there. So your prediction there was correct as well. Ooh, maybe this is just releasing funny. I'll try it again, see what happens. Now, why do I always make sure this isn't wiggling? Oh, look, he's turned around. He's, he knows what's coming now. What if this was wiggling this way? And then he might not be aimed at it by the time it fell. Because, you know, if it happens to swing that way and it shoots the bullet that way, but he swings this way, then they, they might miss horizontally, even though they're the same height vertically. All right, let's try it again. Hi, Mark. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. <laughs> Boom. Oh, yeah. That looked more solid. So, yeah, they fall further. They both have more time to fall, but they still fall at the same rate. All right. I f I'm the type that if you set all this up and go to this much work, keep shooting it. So we're going to do it one more time in theory. What will happen now? Let's do it again. Things are different. Talk amongst yourselves while I set it up. What do you think? Uh, we've hurt the monkey enough. Let's shoot Cosmo. Oops. I don't hear much talking. What do you think? Gonna miss it now, right? No? All right, how many don't have a clue? Okay, who thinks it'll hit it? Who thinks it'll miss it? All right, who didn't vote? Because I could tell it's about a third of you didn't vote. You have to be one of those. Talk to me. What do we know? What, do we, what, what can we reason out here? The only difference is the bullet gets shot up first. And, and I guess the animal starts higher up. 
but still aimed right at it. What will the bullet do? Show me with your arms, your hands. Yeah, you guys all know that. It's going to go up and back down. Why does it slow down on its way up? Because the force of gravity is accelerating it down. The whole time, it, once it leaves, on its way up, it slows down because it's being accelerated this way. So it slows down, stops, and then starts speeding back up this way. All because of the acceleration due to gravity. If, if we turn gravity off, where would it end up? Yeah, where Cosmo is now, right? How will the times compare that the bullet's in the air versus Cosmo will be in the air? The two, the two. As soon as the bullet comes out, boom, it's in the air and releases Cosmo. So they're, they're both affected by gravity. They're in free fall the same amount of time. And they're both accelerated by the same rate. If we turned off gravity, the bullet would end up up there, right? Well, that's where Cosmo starts. He falls from it up there. All right, vote again. Who thinks it'll miss it? Ooh, less of you. Who thinks it'll hit it? More of you. And at least more of you voted, too. Thanks. All right, well, let's try it out and see if we're full of baloney or not. <laughs> All right, Cosmo, good luck. One, two, three. <laughs> Boom. Nailed him. All right, raise this up so we can see a little more. So it still hits. For, so our reasoning must be sound, and it is. They still fall at the same rate. Just because it was aimed up, it's still the exact same acceleration. It's as if we dropped both from that same height. Because that's where it would have ended up without gravity. So horizontally, it gets over to there. Turn on gravity, and they just fall together. So they're still falling together. It's like this, right? Let's do it another way. This is a spring-loaded gun. You can release. And what it does is it pushes this block horizontally. So it's going to go with a horizontal velocity. Too much stuff in the way now. Uh, that'll work. This one has a hole in it. It's going to slide on. So when I release, the rod's going to go that way. It'll push this one horizontally. At the same time, though, it'll just, whoo, like the tablecloth out from underneath the, the dinnerware. Whoo, and this one will just fall straight at the exact same time. So it's, it's, it's like this. So who will hit the table first? Both. Here we go. And it's a little hard to see, so I'll do it again. I like listening also. You can hear when they hit the first bounce. Ready? Here it comes. Could you tell? Do I need to do it again? So those two pretty much sum up chapter. what I want you to learn in chapter 10. Two-dimensional motion. These projectiles is just two one dimensional motion problems. You usually break them up into horizontal and vertical. So everything we've learned, completely true. And all you do is you just apply it twice. So if you want to know how far something's going horizontally, you just must pick the horizontal components, the horizontal speed, the horizontal force, the horizontal acceleration. And it works out perfect. 
Likewise, you do the same thing. If you want to know how far it falls or goes up, just make sure you're dealing with the vertical velocity, the vertical position, the vertical force, the ver blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So uh, with the bullet, what was its horizontal acceleration? Ooh, what, what, I heard something. Very good. It's zero. Once it got released, nothing was acting on it. A little air resistance, but not much. So yeah, it wasn't accelerating horizontally. Here's my little model. If this is the bullet, every second, if it's going 10 meters per second, and these represent seconds, how far did it, how far did it go in this second? 10 meters. Next one? We did this with carts and little poker chips and flags, right? Remember? So you can see it's a constant velocity, can't you? Because the distance between each successive second doesn't change. There's no acceleration horizontally. OK, now let's just look at vertical. If I dropped it from here after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 seconds, if this represents how far it would have fallen, if I dropped it from here in seven seconds, it would, it would be here. Eight seconds, it'll be here. Can you see this is not linear? You see how it's curved? That tells you it's accelerating. And you guys know how to find those distances, right? One half a t squared. Our acceleration vertically is 10 meters per second every second. So after a certain amount of time, we know exactly how far it falls vertically, just like we know how far it's going horizontally with no acceleration. That is distance equals velocity times time. That's the horizontal velocity in this case. This is the vertical acceleration. Watch this. If I th try to throw the ball, if I come and I try to give it a horizontal velocity like this, but only horizontal, well, I'm trying to match it up. You ready? A little faster. A little slower. You get the idea, though, right? It follows that curve. If we turned gravity off, boom, 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 it'd end up over here. You turn gravity on, and it would have fallen that far in the exact same amount of time. The time it takes to go this way horizontally is the same time it takes to fall this far, times your kind of unifying factor with projectile motion. Just like with the bullet and the monkey, they're in free fall the same amount of time. It just one's moving sideways. How much time does it have? Well, the same time as it has to fall. <laughs> so if you apply both of them, it moves this way at this rate, but it accelerates down at this rate, and you end up right here. And you get the nice parabolic curve that you guys all predict is going to happen anyway. Does that help, maybe? Let's do an animation. I like these. Once the projectors come on. So I can't emphasize enough, when you're thinking through these problems, they're going to mix. You're going to have to deal with horizontal and vertical. And you have to be able to separate and pay attention to, OK, that's only the horizontal stuff. That gives me the answer to that. This is the vertical. Don't let the vertical mess you up for the horizontal and vice versa. It's only when you mix them. You get into trouble. Is that up there now? Good. So here's a ball. We got gravity on down here, horizontal velocity off. You should know what's going to happen. It'll record little marks, and we can think of as second intervals. And you see it accelerate because it gets further and further apart. You know it doesn't fall as far that first second because it's not going as fast yet. But that last second, it falls a lot further. That's this vertical, same idea. 
let's turn on off gravity and a horizontal velocity on. Boom, 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 boom. It's not accelerating, so the distance is the same each successive second. Do that again. Boom, 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 boom. So that's the bullet without gravity. There's Cosmo or the monkey with gravity. But the bullet, when you shoot both, let's turn them both on, it has to match those two and just goes choo -choo 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 -choo. See horizontally? These match up, these match up, these match up, these match up. It goes the same distance horizontally as if it was only moving horizontally. Vertically, these match up. These, these, I think you get it, right? Any questions? So that's how you can figure things out. Check this out. If I shoot the monkey vertically, like we did, like this, Same idea. I need a point. If you turn gravity off, you end up here. Turn gravity on, and in the same amount of time, you would fall that far. So together, the bullet goes up and down, and will end up here at the exact same time it took Cosmo to fall that far, and whammo, they hit. And as somebody asked, if you had, uh, there's a five meters per second simulation, the red ball. If we make it go faster, how will it look different? Yeah, it just goes out further. But vertically, how will it look? Exactly the same. The blue didn't change. It still falls the same. It just had, it was because it was going faster, it could get further downstream, right? It has a bigger range, we say. That's the horizontal distance. But it still took the same amount of time to fall. So what if I shoot it as fast as this one will go? How long will it take to hit the ground? Same amount of time. It just, because it's going faster horizontally, it can get further. Good. Another one? All right. Here, uh, let's make this a little bigger. This is the velocity of a projectile. It's shot at an angle. This one is 45 degrees. You guys see that okay? Here's the, the components. See how the vertical component isn't as large as the actual? Same with horizontal. But if you go at a 45 degree angle, the components are equal. The same amount of vertical speed it'll have as horizontal speed. Notice I said speed, not velocity, because the, dir the direction changes. So it, it has some horizontal and some vertical. If you uh, launch it, you can see how those two components change. First notice the light blue one, this main one here. Does it change? No, it stays at 50 meters per second. That's how fast it was shot at. Inertia keeps it at 50 meters per second. It's combined speed. Its resultant speed is 50 meters per second. Let's look at the horizontal speed. Does it change? Comments, tell me. It's the same. Why? Because it's not accelerating. There's no net force on it once you launch it. So yeah, let's watch that again. It, the horizontal doesn't change. But the vertical, do you see it? The vertical speed does change because it's accelerating. It starts out up, but as it accelerates down, it slows down, stops, changes directions, and speeds back up. Because there is a net acceleration down. Gravity is causing that force to, to make it change. What if... Okay, that one went here, about 250, 250 meters. 
What if we shoot it faster? You see what happens to all the vectors? They all get bigger. So what will happen? It will go further? Why? Will it be in the air longer? You know what? I didn't pay attention to that. What was this at? 50 before? Yeah, it was 7.2, I think. So we can we can notice that too. 7.2, all right. Do it again. Let's just do it. So observations, it does go further. What else does it do? It goes higher. And was it in the air longer? 9.38, absolutely. But it's the two different components that justify those. It goes farther. Why? Because look at that horizontal vector. It's bigger. It's going faster. Why am I I'm pointing at the screen? <laughs> there, horizontally. So that makes it go further downrange. But the vertical component's bigger too. So it's in the air longer. That determines how high up it goes. Because it's in the air longer, it has more time to move. And so it goes further. You with me? That makes sense? So again, you can separate the two components to imagine what anything's going to do. Physics can predict exactly how long it'll be in the air and exactly how far it will go. This one, to figure out how long it's in the air, do you even need the horizontal speed? No, that has nothing to do with how high up it goes. You would just take that vertical component. All right, let's uh, change the angle. How about 60 degrees? I'm trying to get 60. There. Do you see that the horizontal is shorter? So what will happen because of that? Won't go as far. But look at the vertical. What will that tell us? It'll go higher. And indeed, both are correct. You can see it goes higher than that last one. And didn't quite make it as far either. But look at the time. It was clearly in the air longer. It had more time to go further, but it wasn't going as fast horizontally. So it didn't go as far. How do you think that will change? Let's see, it made it here. What is that, 380-ish? No, 350-ish. There's, there's 350, there's 400, 375, about that far. What if I make it 30 degrees? Now it'll, it's going faster horizontally, but won't be in the air as long. What do you think will happen? Think it'll go the same distance, shorter or farther? Farther? I heard more far, farther, because it has more horizontal speed. That's very logical. See, you guys are, are learning. Let's do it. Whoop. Exactly the same. Go back to that 60. The idea is, yes, it absolutely was going faster horizontally, so that allows it to go further downrange. But it didn't have as much time to go downrange when it was 30 degrees. It wasn't in the air as long, so it didn't have time to go as far. If the two values add up to 90 like that, 30 and 60, it magically works out. They go the same distance. If you had uh, 15, it's going fast, but it's not in the air long. Let's see where that one's at. What, 220-ish maybe? What adds up to 90? 75. So let's shoot this one higher up. Come on. There we go. goes a lot higher, but it's not going very fast horizontally. So it spends a lot more time in the air, but it's going slower horizontally. And bada-bing, bada-boom, whammo, same distance. Because they add up to 90. Now notice, this didn't go as far as 30 and 60 did. But... The complements went the same distance.
I can do the, this one. Lest you, uh, some people don't like animations, you know. Oh, you cheated. Well, here's my launcher. It's spring loaded, so I'm going to exert a force over a distance. And I'm going to compress the spring. So it now has potential energy, elastic potential energy. It's stored in the spring. It has the potential to do work. I set it at 45 degrees. So we don't know what it is, but it has some uh, velocity like this. Can you visualize the components? Drop a perpendicular and a shorter vector horizontally. Drop a perpendicular to the ver shorter vertically. But how do these compare? Their values. If this is a 45 degree angle. Yeah, it's the same. This component will be the same as this component in magnitude. All right, let's see where it goes. Oh, I made it. Woohoo! So let's put it to 60 degrees. Do you think it'll go further or shorter? Sixty degrees. So it's not going to be going as fast horizontally, but it will be in the air longer. What's your gut tell you? I don't expect you to know, but mm, about there. Who thinks it'll go further? Shorter? Most people shorter. Yeah, did that hit my textbook? So yeah, clearly shorter. So let's make it 30. Where will it land? Same place? Do you understand why now? Again, we're just separating this two-dimensional projectile motion into components, horizontal and vertical, two separate one-dimensional problems. So now, yeah, it's going faster that way. But it won't be in the air as long. Let's see where it lands. Whoops. And were they about the same? Uh, that one wasn't an error. Why they're not exactly the same. Which one went further? Slightly. Anybody catch it? Catch that? Didn't quite catch it. I think to me it looked like uh, it's from this side. It looked like the 30 went maybe here and the 60 here. They were a little off. It actually wasn't a fluke. Why would the 60 degree angle shot not go quite as far in real life? Air resistance, yeah. Ideally, everything I've been telling you works great, but we can't get rid of the air in the room. Who, who would it, why would it affect the 60 degree more? It was in the air longer. It had a higher vertical component. So because it was in the air longer, it had more, the air resistance force had longer to act, changed its momentum greater, and it, didn't, it slowed it down. It couldn't go quite as far as it would have without it. Does that make sense? How are we doing? 30. Let's do another one. I like this one. Here's a cart. It rolls horizontally. And I leveled things so that uh, it's a true test here. If I turn this on, red light blinks. There's a ball here. I'm going to load a spring again. And there's a sensor on my side. If I block the sensor, this is what it does. It shoots straight up. Gives it a vertical velocity. I'm going to give it a horizontal velocity. And when it passes here, it'll shoot out of, the, out of its cart. So I'll be moving, and boom, it'll shoot straight up. So what will happen? Where will the ball land? I can hear, here, in front of it, maybe in it, behind it. Talk to me. Inside? But this one keeps moving ahead. Is that why you think it'll be behind? Because this one keeps moving ahead? 
That's what most people think. Yes, Glenn? Yeah, the, the the cart is moving relative to the rail. Well, is it moving relative to the rail right now? Yes. So it, it's going to have the same horizontal velocity as the cart. When it gets here, the only difference is the ball is going to get shot up straight. Straight relative to what? Go ahead. Ah, yeah, if you jump in a, in a train or a plane, you move with it. You know, I forget the value, but it's like thousands of kilometers a second, the Earth rotates, and we're on it. We're moving it. We're, we're going fast. So well, how come when I jump into the air, whee, the wall doesn't slam into me? It's a valid question. Because we're both moving, right? So I go in the air, it should like totally slam into me. Why, do, why doesn't it? I'm moving with it. Back to inertia. Or now with this, I have that same horizontal velocity. I didn't get rid of it magically because I jumped in the air. So let's see what happens. We'll cock the spring, load it, and... Ta -da. So at this point, the ball it was it had a horizontal velocity, but when it got to that part, it still has that horizontal velocity, but now it just gained a vertical velocity, didn't it? That determines how high up it goes and how long it's in the air. This one is how far it's going to go down the track. That's the same speed as the cart, so it's going to stay horizontally with the cart. It's going to go in that direction, and it'll do that nice projectile motion and land in the cart. Yes? Yes. Yes, if this were narrower, well, one, it doesn't always shoot exactly straight up. I got some knobs. Uh, but yes, if we replaced it with something where air resistance is significant. I wonder if this thing fits. If it does, we'll try it. It might be a little big. Styrofoam ball. And seems like it. <laughs> yeah, behind it. Was that a fluke? Do it again. Let's test. Ah, behind it. Because, yeah, it's being retarded by the air resistance. That The air resistance is horizontal, and it's making this accelerate that way, and this gets smaller. So it can't keep up with the cart. What if I go faster? What if I do this a lot zippier? Should it still land in? No, why? What's your gut telling you? then why will it not land in it if it's exactly the same thing? I put, I put the, I got rid of the styrofoam ball. We're back to, ah, uh, so, oh, you, you, very good. If it was styrofoam, yeah. Actually, it would probably be retarded more because it would have been in the air even longer, maybe. No, because it's the same spring. So it would shoot it up the same height. It'd be in the air the same amount of time. It'd look the same. <laughs> well, now we're back to the rubber ball. What do you think will happen now? Should still land? We get here? I'm making it more difficult. <laughs> Woohoo! Cleared the tunnel. So, yeah, there we go. That's fun. What do we got? Five minutes? Let's. Do some clicker questions then. We'll close with that. We'll, we'll see how we're, we, we're feeling about this.
Uh, yeah, we can get one or two in. All right, whoop. Oh, I didn't mean to hit that button. I want that button. All right, let you guys get logged in. The question's already open. We're going to shoot a cannonball horizontally at 10 meters per second, but off a cliff. So what would its speed be a second later? By that, it means it's, it's resultant, it's actual speed, not one of its components. Will it change or increase into what value? I won't lie, this isn't ex you know, dirt simple. So see if it, you can, how the reasoning is going at this point. So yeah, we, we got a cliff. And it's shot out at 10 meters per second horizontally. You know what its motion will do, right? I bet you can all draw it. It's going to curve down some because it's moving both horizontally and vertically. It's like this. Sometime later, it'll be down here. What will its speed be that second later? That speed is in this direction now. It's going that way. It comes down, it's going that way. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Most of you A. Next would be B. The answer is good. I'm glad I asked this. This is one where I would have you rediscuss it. But since we're at the end of class, we'll just spare you. 14. And I think I know it might be throwing you off, so let me try it first. What's its horizontal? Let's say a second later is here. I'm exaggerating. But what's its horizontal velocity at that point? Heard one vote for 10. Horizontal. Yeah, it is still 10 because it's not accelerating horizontally. And that was what most an people's answer was. What's its vertical velocity now? 10. Very good. First, I would hope you'd say, oh, it's something <laughs> because it accelerated. Then you have to think back to what we already learned. Well, what will it be? What's the acceleration, rate of acceleration? 10 meters per second every second. So after one second, you've told me this before, it'll get up to 10 meters per second. So at this point, it's now has a horizontal component of 10 and a vertical component of 10. So its combined speed is in this direction and is bigger. So these are equal. It's a 45 degree angle. I didn't know if everybody would know, but it's a square root of 2 more, and it ends up being 14. It's, it's 10, time, 10 times the square root of 2. Um, they went over that in your book. But anyway, in this case, it would be exactly 14. I just want you to see that now it has two. It's gained this vertical component. And those both contribute to how fast it's going. It picks up speed overall. Not horizontally, but it has vertically. So overall, it still only picks up speed also. Does that make sense? Go ahead. I won't ask another question. Yeah, that, that would work too. You can do 10 squared plus 10 squared equals this hypotenuse squared. This is 10. This side of the triangle is 10. The hypotenuse is this. And yeah, that, that'll make it come out to 14.1 or something. Uh, yes. Yes. Square root of 200 which is about 14. But it's just this whole idea of they're, they're, they're independent. Remember that as you're finishing up your homework tonight. OK, I'll, I'll ask a couple other clicker questions uh, Monday, because I know this needs to sink in. But we're going to start chapter 35 on relativity next week. Have a great weekend.